Good morning, Governor. C4, Happy New Year to you. It's great to be back. And uh, C4, C4, Change Maryland. Those are the old, the, old days. You, you know so that I started that nine and a half years ago, and you were like one of the first people to ever like let me come talk on the radio and so talk about this crazy stuff. Well, and, what uh, happened though was you were able to galvanize a, a an opinion based on people not being able to do business in the state, based yeah. on people whether they're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, yeah. feeling as if they were being gouged. And, yeah. and I think that that's what really catapulted not just Change Maryland, but your whole. And now we see now the years with no tax. I want to get to the budget right out of this. For the sixth year in a row, we're introducing a budget that doesn't have any tax increases. Yeah, I mean we've been able to fully fund all of our priorities with absolutely no. Uh, tax increases, uh, uh, no cutting of services, and without raiding the special funds like they've been doing it for years. Um, it's, uh, but it's exactly what people uh, wanted and what they voted for. And uh, uh, you and I have been talking about this for, for a long a while. time. And I think when it comes to the, pe the pocketbook issues, of course we'll care about governor. But you can't really have pocketbook issues if you're worried about people beating you up yeah. for what's in your pocket. We no once question. again, after a year of 300 plus homicides, so over 700 non-fatal shootings, uh, carjackings up 20% 2019 in Baltimore City. Then we're looking at the issue of aggravated assaults. And then in Baltimore County, an 85% increase in homicides. A 68-year-old woman just yesterday carjacked in Lutherville. I mean, the crime is expanding, Governor. It's, uh, it's completely uh, out of control and unacceptable. And the response, uh, particularly here in the city, has uh, has just not been... Uh, acceptable. I mean, they're just not addressing the issue. So, um, I, I, when I rolled out my, uh, legislative package and we talked about, about a, a week or so ago, we really pushed hard on our tough on crime package, um, with a number of bills, one of which, uh, makes it tougher, it's tougher penalties for people that commit felonies with guns, tougher penalties for people that sell illegal firearms, um, you know, and judicial transparency legislation to make sure we publish the sentencing that is given down by judges on violent felonies. Um, okay, I'll stop you on that one, Governor, yeah. because to me, the significance of that, and I want people to understand, we have the Baltimore City Police Department continuing to say that the average arrest, this is just last year, and there's been more in the past, of the homicide victim was eight arrests for the homicide victim last year. Yeah. And the people that do it in the mid-20s, they're not staying in jail. Well, it's, I think it's 8.9 arrests and, and uh, almost three convictions. Uh, so and yet happening? they're still out shooting people again and again. Okay. Uh, it's a revolving door. So, look, we, we lowered the uh, prison uh, sentences for the, the, tough, the sentences for many, many crimes. And I'm for second chances. I pushed the, uh, the uh, justice JR reinvestment, justice reinvestment mm -hmm. which was, you know, uh, one of the most aggressive in the country. We lowered our prison population by, you know, more than 49 other states did. But when it comes to these Violent, repeat violent felons who are shooting people on the streets of Baltimore. That's different. We have to get them off the streets and get tough. So this is something that nearly 90% of the people in Baltimore City support. And it seems as if the only ones who don't support it are uh, the city leaders and uh, some of the uh, folks that represent the city in, in the legislature. And I don't know how they can face their constituents every day. Well, I am challenging, and I have been for a while, our city citizens to, uh, uh, you know, aggressively but respectfully, it's election year. Confront your elected officials yeah. and tell them how you feel about this. Because, Governor, as you've said, session after session, you keep coming up with different initiatives, more truth in sentencing. Or, and this is really only yeah. on repeat violent offenders, yeah. and yet it's city legislators. Yeah. For well, the most we, part, that we have a offenders. witness intimidation bill because one of the problems is people are afraid to testify. I'll, you know, you'll see someone. You're, you know, shoot somebody in broad daylight, but you're afraid to testify because you know that person is not going to go to jail and they're going to come back out on the street and retaliate and, retaliate and shoot you. Uh, so you're not going to testify and that way you can't get a prosecution. So we have tough uh, bills to, uh, on, on witness intimidation that is supported by 97 to 0 among Baltimore City residents. And we're getting resistance from folks in the legislature. Oh, we can't, we can't pass that kind of a bill. It's well, crazy. One of the questions, Governor Larry Hogan joins me in the studio for our talk with the governor's segment. Are things all right with you specifically, Governor, and the Baltimore City State's Attorney, Marilyn Mosby? Well, look, I think we have some, uh, on a personal level, um, I've tried to be as uh, 
you know, as open to her. We sat down just a few weeks ago. I, I try to be as friendly as a, you know, I, I always believe that you could tr you could get more done when you sit down with people and listen to their side of things and you, you try to have a civil dialogue. But there's no question that we have a difference of opinion uh, about how we go about uh, handling some of these some of these crimes. And, you know, so I said I put more money into her budget to help her prosecute crime. I put more money into Rob Her's budget so that uh, the federal prosecutors can go after uh, on federal gun. He talked crimes, about it on the show. He mentioned it on the show. Uh, you know, for Project Exile so we can put some folks in pr federal prison. And I put more money in the attorney general, Brian Frosch's budget so that he can help prosecute because I think it's a all hands on deck. I, I don't care about silos and territorial disputes I, I want all of our prosecutors at the local state and federal level doing everything we can to get the murderers and the shooters off the streets when it comes to mayor jack young and baltimore city police commissioner michael harris and governor larry hogan you had a meeting with the two of them uh right before the end of the year D based upon your giving 21 million at that time you're giving even more money how do you feel that relationship with you the mayor and, and the commissioner well and, and the 21 million yesterday uh yesterday we rolled out by the way our but today we have rolled out our budget which we highlighted yesterday, the big focus on crime, the big chunk of that going to Baltimore City, another several hundred million dollars into Baltimore City to help with uh, crime fighting efforts. Um, you know, we continue to try to support the city as much as we can. Um, you know, look, I have a good relationship uh, with with both the, the mayor and the police commissioner, but it's no secret that I'm frustrated with um, with the fact that I still don't believe that we have a viable crime plan that's that's successfully well, making, it making a agree. difference. Look. And and we had a meeting that was, quite frankly, frustrating because they talked about a bunch, in my opinion, things that weren't really going to make a difference. And I talked about the things I just mentioned to you uh, just a moment ago and said, we need your support to get these things done, and then we just got a bunch of double talk. Well, so look how long it took to if you're not to willing to take the criminals off the streets, we're not going to be able to stop the shooting in the city. Well, look how long it took to agree to get a surveillance plane in the sky. It's they crazy. They agreed to that. So in one one day, I decided to put 14 Maryland State Police helicopters over the city. They fly over the city every single day now. Uh, and they've been debating this one plane for three years. Well, it's nonsense. Time. So, Governor Larry Hogan, beyond the issue of the uh, crime fight, which, of course, is, is paramount. I, I don't have it's the long. most important issue, C4. Nothing else really stacks up to that. You hear a lot of talk about this is the issue, that's the issue. Look, we have many different priorities to talk about in Annapolis. Nothing rises to this level where people are dying in the streets every day. Baltimore City... Now the population, there's only 600,000 people in Baltimore City. We have 348 murders. New York City has 8.6 million people, and they only had 308 murders. They got 8 million more people. It used to be the murder capital Absolutely. of America. Now we got more people getting killed on the streets of Baltimore. I mean, Baltimore is now our fifth largest jurisdiction in Maryland, population-wise, yeah. but it's, it's where most of, almost all the crime is taking place. And now, I'm going to say again, it's regional. It is not staying within the limits of Baltimore City. It's getting into Baltimore it's County. It's spilling over into the counties, particularly Baltimore County, where the, the stats are, the, the total numbers aren't nearly as high, but the percentage yeah, rate of percentage. growth of crime is, is skyrocketing, out, skyrocketing out of control. So when it comes to, and I'll get back, uh, finish on crime in a moment with you, when it comes to your budget, what you're looking at, even though you're giving money to Baltimore City, are you kind of also approaching this regionally? Because Baltimore County Executive Johnny Oshevsky is doing more with Mayor Jack Young to try to approach, particularly some of the property crimes, some of the carjack, a regional approach to this, Governor. It is a regional, it's a, it's a regional approach. It's also a state, federal, and local approach. So, you know, we have, uh, over the past year or so, been trying to bring together all of the stakeholders, every federal agency, every state agency, along with all of the uh, local jurisdictions in the region, uh, to work as a team to go in and focus on this, uh, this crime problem in the region. We brought together 23 different federal, state, and local agencies and fi sent 500 additional officers into the city we, arrest, uh, we uh, arrested 2,000 people. We uh, processed, uh, you know, all the warrants on all the toughest, most violent criminals. But 
uh, you know, it, it, everybody was let right back on the streets. I mean, you know, you get uh, charged with uh, shooting someone or violent crime, and, uh, you know, you're basically back on the streets within 30 days. I don't know whether it was uh, President Mike Miller becoming President Emeritus and no longer being at the front of the room, but for him to take the floor of the Senate the other day and to point a personal privilege a yeah. part, which I know quite well, and say Rome is burning, it yeah. is our responsible in the city, in the city to do that, and to not have immediate action at that point by the legislature. I just don't know what to say. Mike Miller. Well, well, so, so I think it's because uh, he's at the point now where he can say what he really thinks. You know, he's a senator. Uh, he cares about the state. He It's about his legacy. He's not in a position where he has to worry about the votes of those city uh, senators right. or uh, alienating somebody or hurting their feelings. He can say what the truth is. And the truth is... Uh, that we have to do something about this problem. I mean, he mentioned looking at your ideas. He mentioned looking at what the governor's doing. Well, ninety percent of the voters in Baltimore City agree with our ideas. They're the ones that are suffering from the crime. They're the ones that are afraid to be in their own neighborhoods. They're the ones that are being shot in the streets. It's not people in Hartford County that are worried about it. It's the people in Baltimore City that are worried about it. Well, the Baltimore Sun, and I'm only using them because I do believe they represent some of the political figures in the city viewpoint. They think that if all you did as governor, all the legislature did was give more money to the city, that everything would be great, whether it's public education, whether it's transportation, you name it. That was kind of their op-ed the other day. If you want to help Baltimore, give us more money. Well, uh, so we've tried that. Um, since I've been governor, we've put $6 billion into Baltimore City. We put $1 billion into uh, public safety. We've put record funding six years in, in a row into education in general, but particularly into Baltimore City that receives twice as much funding as any other jurisdiction in the state per pupil. It's the third highest funded school system in America of large school systems. And uh, we're not getting results. It's really about accountability. It's about uh, a lack of management. And it's, a, it's about, you know, you... Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you do need to fund priorities, but throwing money at a problem is not always the solution. We have to get better results, and we're not getting results. And uh, so we got to try something different. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's just a smokescreen. Well, if we had only done this, if we had more money, well, it's, What's disguising? we've proven that that's not the answer. Well, it's disguising what you said. You call this your accountability budget. And the thing is, the accountability of when the money leaves Annapolis, what does it do when it gets to Baltimore? Well, How are we making sure it reaches the classroom? A, it's not. It's not reaching the classrooms. It's obviously we're not getting the results as we've put, as we've put more money in. We we've, we've gotten uh, worse results. Uh, so it's obviously not the answer. What we need is more accountability. More you know we need more opportunities because you know who's really being cheated are the kids in Baltimore Absolutely. City that are being denied opportunities that aren't getting the education they deserve. But it's not because there's not enough money. They get more money than the other jurisdictions. It's because uh, their leaders are failing them. So basically, it's not the kids who are failing. It's it's the it's the people that are that should be uh, looking out for them. Because you want governor to have an inspector general component in whatever happens with Kerwin, and because you want to do these things, and you're not aggressively talking about raising people's taxes. I guess you hate children. You hate uh, kids. That you, and that's kind of what the analysis is. You won't fully throat a uh, fully throatedly support Kerwin because of that. Well, so look here, uh, the Kerwin. There are some really good ideas and recommendations in Kerwin. Uh, which we support. We just submitted a budget this morning, which fully funds Kerwin in the first year, three hundred fifty million dollars. Um, and we're look. Uh, this is the sixth budget in a row where I, I have uh, put in record funding for education, over and above the legislatively mandated formulas. Um, a more for Baltimore City, although they're, all the formulas call for them to get less because they have declining enrollments. We continue to supplement and put in more than the legislature calls for. But we're also demanding more accountability to make sure those dollars get into the classroom and where they're making a difference for the kids. And all I'm saying with respect to this, you can't you can't force mandate 33 billion in additional new spending and then have no plan whatsoever about where that money is going to come from. And then lie to people and say, we're not going to raise your taxes right. or say, what 33 billion are you going to cut out of other things? It's all make believe. It's crazy. So and then, then, and then we have uh, Mayor, Jack, Mayor Jack Young says we don't have the three hundred and twenty million to come up with. The state needs to pay our share. Also, you have Angela Also Brooks, who's the Prince George's yeah. County Executive, says we're not raising property taxes by three hundred sixty million. So you need to pay our share, or we have to eliminate the police department. I mean, it, it, it's so. Look, we have to have a long conversation about uh, some of these ideas of implementing the Kerwin Commission, but. 
Uh, that's certainly not the number one priority of the of this session. It's crime. And what I don't hear, <laughs> Governor, what I don't hear, since we're talking about outcomes, since Dr. Brett Ker Kerwin repeated again yesterday, the Kerwin Commission, who is named after him, he said, listen, 40% of Maryland public school students are career and college ready when they graduate. So I don't see anything about maybe charter schools yeah. or school choice, anything other than what we're doing. Right. Because what we're doing apparently isn't working. And, like and, and we just want to double down on it. That's that's the uh, that's the whole idea. So, look, I'm all about uh, investing in our kids, making sure that every single child in Maryland gets the uh, the best education they can, regardless of what neighborhood they happen to grow up in, and making sure we get better results. Not like just how can we spend more money. That's what the argument's been about. How do we spend more money? And uh, we don't know where it's going to come and from. And by the way, when you look at that, and I'm going to get to the part of discretionary budget, you just really put that in stark measure, how much you can actually cut from and how much is mandated spending. But when it comes to what Kerman is calling for, most of it, of course we know it's got to go to salaries, but most of it's going to adults. How much of it is going to kids? Uh, very little. But so in our in our budget yesterday, we fully funded $350 million for this year's Kerwin. Uh, we put in $94 million for pre-K. Well, a lot of these things that they're talking about, and it was our sixth budget in a row to fully fund, uh, to record fund education, $7.3 billion in K-12 through education. No governor in the history of the state has ever come close to investing as much in education as we have. But you don't love education. Uh, and, uh, and yet, because I've questioned the extra $33 billion, I also pushed for the casino lockbox initiative, which we campaigned for, ran commercials for, and got people to vote for. Voted for. It, it, people voted for that's putting 4.4 billion more in education. I propose 3.9 billion in school construction, school construction which mm -hmm. is the largest in history. We're going to we're going to fulfill every single local request in school construction. So it's just a phony narrative uh that you know we keep hearing mostly in the Baltimore Sun editorial pages and you know from the teachers union, but it's just completely false. Another narrative running through particularly the CNR area, Governor Larry Hogan who joins us here in the studio is that you basically don't care about public transportation in our area that you and your administration are funding the Washington region, but basically you've killed the red line you've killed it you that's yeah. the narrative they're running well so uh another false narrative um first of all i ran for governor promising we were not going to do the red line because it made no economic or transportation sense that's why people voted for me one of the reasons we said we were going to uh, finally after decades of neglect move forward on all the top priority road projects in every jurisdiction in the state which we have done we have 800 uh, road projects totaling nine billion dollars currently under construction which is what the voters of maryland wanted to have happen uh, the red line really accomplished nothing our the transportation department said it made no sense the washington post editorial board uh, it was a $4 billion dollar boondoggle. Said, said it was a boondoggle that it never made any economic or transportation sense. And uh, the Baltimore Sun has written hundreds of times that all of the Baltimore's problems are because of the, we, us killing the red line. Uh, you know, if, if it was, I don't know why Martin O'Malley didn't do the red line the eight years he was governor or all the whole time he was mayor, but it, it never made any sense. I promised not to do it. I didn't do it. Um, and it wasn't going to change all of these problems and issues in Baltimore. But here's the fact. Again, no governor in the history of the state has ever invested more in transit. We've put $14 billion into transit. And on, tr on transit dollars, Baltimore City receives 10 times more transit funding than any other jurisdiction in Maryland. So... Uh, I'm, I'm cutting off Baltimore, not funding them. They get more funding on schools. They get more money on transportation. They get more money on almost every single category. So it's just a completely false narrative. Finally, Governor Larry Hogan, I can't let you go without asking the question that people hit me with wherever I go. And I understand the realism of this, but I have to ask you. People are saying, Governor Hogan, we can't walk during the daytime. We can't get in our cars without being carjacked. Why don't you just take Baltimore City over? Well, I hear that almost every day. I just came from an event before I came here this morning, and somebody asked me. Why, I had a reporter uh, ask me on air just a moment ago, uh, why, uh, can't, why can't you send in the National Guard? I have people saying that. Look, um, I don't think the people of Baltimore City really want uh, National Guard soldiers and airmen standing on the street corners with machine guns. Uh, in fatigues and having tanks rolling down the streets like we had to do in the, during the riots when we sent in 4,000 guardsmen to bring law and order and return peace and calm to the city. Uh, but it's, 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 that's how outrageous and out of control the problem is that people are actually saying that. Okay. I mean, I don't think martial law is the answer and I don't think sending in the guard and, and taking over the city is, is the way to go. But 
it, it, it's a it's a real statement on how far how far the problem has advanced when we've gotten to the point where people are actually discussing that. Well, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, we will hopefully be getting with you uh, in about a month to talk about how the session is going and, and be able to talk with you. And whenever you're in town, I appreciate it. And, you know, you could leave one of these guys uh, back well, in Annapolis when you come in. You know, well, I was thinking about that lobbyist that you have over there. I was thinking about leaving this guy here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have enough food. I have enough food. I have enough food here, Governor. Yeah. I appreciate it. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, thank you, sir.